What would the world look like after an apocalyptic war? What would happen when everyone loses their sense of order? Would it be unending chaos, wars, and a constant thirst for blood? Meet Max Rokostansky, a former police officer who now has to survive under those crazy living conditions, with a car that could give James Bond a run for his money and an appetite that includes chewing up lizards. Max drives through the empty wasteland. Despite his insane driving skills, Max is captured by a bunch of war boys and is taken by Immortan Joe, the ultimate antagonist. Joe controls thousands of war boys and also presides over a village of hungry and half-alive humans. Joe survives wearing a life suit that covers every bit of his body except his eyeballs, and he shows his generosity by giving his subjects water, a most valuable commodity in this world. It's just that he doesn't give them containers or taps. He makes it rain, like a god. At the same time, it's about to get really dirty on the streets. Meet Imperator Furiosa, a dangerous woman with a robotic arm who walks around with her own steering wheel. Okay, everyone here walks around with their own steering wheels. It's not like there's any dealerships. Imperator Furiosa is leading the war boys to Gastown and Bullet Farm to extract gasoline and ammunition for her boss. But Scary Woman has other plans. Rather than to go to Gastown or Bullet Farm, she heads east into hostile territory, defying the orders of Immortan Joe. But that's not the best part. She's taken the old man's wives with her and, well, his unborn babies. So here's the thing. Immortan Joe has these women he calls the prize breeders. Now, just like the name suggests, these women carry Joe's babies and every child would end up being a warlord. While this might sound like a good deal to some of the villagers living without water, these women want none of it. Understandable, right? So they choose to escape with Furiosa, who wants to take him to the green place. Naturally, this gets the old man furious. The best war boys are sent out to find the rogue Imperator, and even call on Gastown and Bullet Farm to help. And this brings us back to Max, who right now is still trapped in Joe's prison. He's having a tough time, tied from the waist up with his face turned towards the ground. He's tied beside Nux, a war boy who's sick and expected to die soon. However, when Nux hears about the charge for Furiosa, he becomes hungry for war and asks to join the war boys. Before we get on with it, like the video, smash that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to join our expendable squad. Max is made to be Nux's blood bag, his physical life support, meaning he has no choice but to join them on their adventure. The war boys get on the road hungry for war and blood, plus a live rock band to provide war entertainment. Because hey, when you're in a high-speed chase, you need a blind guy on a bungee cord to play a solo now and then. Immortan Joe joins the chase, along with his children, who look just as menacing as he does. Now two factions are furious with Furiosa at the same time. First is Joe and his war boys, and the other is a clan of men speaking Russian. In her bid to escape from Joe, Furiosa drives into enemy territory making herself and her war boys bait for the angry enemies known as Buzzers. A dirty war starts between the Imperator and the Buzzers, but Furiosa enjoys an insane first ride, destroying the Buzzers with quick calculated shots. It doesn't take long before Joe's war boys join the fight against the Buzzers, and it's right here that Furiosa and Max meet each other for the first time. If you can forget the bombs and screams from the ongoing war around them for a brief moment, this moment could easily look like the start of a love story. But this love story is quickly interrupted by the next war. Furiosa might not be as powerful as Joe and his war boys, but she sure is smarter than most of them. She drives into a sandstorm, hoping this will detract her pursuers. And it does, except for the ambitious Nux, who's willing to sacrifice his life to end hers. But Nux doesn't win. Instead, his road rage and bloodthirsty appetite only causes him to lose Max, who escapes and saves the rig that contains Furiosa. Later on, Max finds her with the rig, repairing the damage Nux did to it. Here we see the wives for the first time, and we also realize that one of them is pregnant with Immortan Joe's baby. That would explain why he would do anything to have his breeders back. At the same time, like the second stage of every genuine love story, Max doesn't like Furiosa, and you could say the same for her. Their gruesome fight is all the proof that we need. Eventually, they realize they want the same thing, so, like a gentleman, Max steals the rig from her and only allows Furiosa and the women to go with him because, well, he's such a gosh darn nice guy. Oh, 
and Nux isn't dead. He attacks again and tries to kill Furiosa, but he's too weak against these two. What was he thinking? At the same time, more soldiers have joined Joe's team from Gastown, with the most dangerous one being called the People Eater. And he looks quite scary, especially when you consider that he's got an iron nose in place of his real one. Now, with Furiosa at the wheel, Max rides through the desert with Amort and Joe's wives. After a while, they arrive at a canyon, controlled by a gang of bikers. Before this little adventure, Furiosa made a deal. That she would pass through without any hitch. In return, they would receive 3,000 gallons of guzzoline. But the bikers aren't convinced arguing that they expected just a small war party in her pursuit, not three. They almost grant her passage according to the agreement, but everything changes when Joe arrives with his war boys. The bikers engage in a fight with Furiosa and Max, while Joe and his war boys follow closely behind. Max's team conquers the bikers, which only gets Joe closer to him. As he approaches, he orders Nux to break into the war rig again. And just like the last time, Max and Furiosa give the war boy a well-deserved beating. But then, a great tragedy strikes. Angarad, the pregnant wife, falls off the rig during the chase. Unfortunately, Joe tries to swerve to save her, but ends up running her over and tumbling his vehicle over. As you already guessed, Amort and Joe is pissed and will do anything to have Furiosa's skull in his hand. Back at the war rig, everyone's sad about the tragic death of Angarad. Max is curious. What's special about the green place anyway? She says it's a place she heard about when she was little, and it's located in the east region. Just a few seconds later, one of the wives, Capable, finds Nux at the back of the rig, disgusted at his own failure. She consoles him, and we see this war boy show emotions for the first time. A bit beautiful, if you ask me. It's a brief moment of silence before the war starts again. This time, Furiosa and Max, and surprisingly Nux, who is now part of the team, overpower Joe and his forces with mines planted in the swampy ground. While Joe is forced to stop and also mourn the death of his unborn child, his allies from the bullet farm take up the charge on his behalf. Definitely smarter than Joe's war boys, it takes a heavy amount of intelligence to defeat the bullet farmer. After a shootout that could make James Bond crap his pants, Furiosa lands one bullet on the bullet farmer making him unable to see. Now, they have an upper hand. Max takes the opportunity to confront the Bullet Farm army, and he gloriously returns with bullets and guns. After an intense night of swamp rides and shootouts, the morning comes with a new lease of hope. But this hope is quickly dashed when the group comes down on an odd woman, whose oddness kind of beats every single one we've seen before. After a bit of ancestry tracing and investigation, this woman finds out that Furiosa is a lost child from her tribe, who was kidnapped when she was a child. While this might sound tragic, it's not the bad news. The bad news is this. The green place actually exists, but it's no longer fit for living conditions. The women, mothers as they're called, say that the green place was taken over by crows when the water became poison. She adds that all the other mothers are dead, and they are the only ones remaining. This means that the group, including the wives, must look for a new home. They decide to abandon the rig and ride deep into the desert with motorbikes. But fortunately, Max has an idea. Despite the fact that he constantly remembers a child he failed to save, he tells the group that the best option is to go back to the Citadel. It definitely sounds like a crazy plan. But Max is quite convincing, and he manages to get everyone on his side, including Furiosa. Naturally, the group meets Joe and his war boys on their way back. Another war happens between the group and the boys, with a number of casualties on both sides. Unfortunately, our hero Furiosa also suffers an extremely bad injury. At the end of this long fight, a number of women from Furiosa's tribes die in the hands of Joe and his war boys, while Joe's first son Rictus is killed by Nux, who eventually sacrifices his own life for the cause. Look at him. At the end of the day, Furiosa's face is the last that Amort and Joe sees, and it got me wondering what went through his mind in those final seconds. She took his wives and his life, and this seems a bit extreme, right? But hey, Amort and Joe surely had it coming. Eventually, the group traps the war boys in the canyon with a blown up tanker of several guzzolines and drives back to the Citadel in Joe's car. After the battle has been won, Furiosa collapses, her body empty of blood. 
But here's where the love story continues. Like her knight in shining armor, Max transfuses his own blood to her, bringing the strong woman back to life. I guess we all deserve love, no matter how strong we think we can be on our own. Back at the Citadel, the people are finally happy that a Morton Joe is dead. Come on, who wouldn't be? This dude used to give out water to people for like five seconds. Right at the end, the people cheer for Furiosa and the other women. But clearly, Max isn't interested in leading a town or becoming some sort of supreme leader. Right after the cheering, he looks at Furiosa and walks away. Perhaps he went in search of another adventure, or redemption. I guess we'll never know, until the eventual sequel. This is a review for Mad Max Fury Road, which was produced by Doug Mitchell and George Miller, and featured Charlize Theron, Tom Hardy, and Nicholas Holt. You think you would have survived this very intense journey? Let me know with the hashtag cinema recap in the comments.